Today, I wanna to give you guys a bit of an update on these, the Scout HDs from Fat Shark. If you don't know what these are, they are a set of digital FPV goggles that are designed to be used with the HD Zero or Sharkbite digital FPV system. They are the first goggles to have that HD Zero receiver built in as standard. A little while back on the channel, I gave you guys a complete review of these goggles. We tore them apart. We had a look at the specs and features. And then at the end, I gave you my thoughts. Something though I didn't talk about in that video was an issue that I was actually having with them with regards to the reception on one of the antennas. I did touch on one of the cables being loose, but I was also seeing some strange behavior from the input itself on the goggles. I noticed this the day I actually received them and I did reach out to the guys at HD Zero to try and understand what the situation was, but I didn't really get an answer. In the end, I tore the goggles apart again, did some more investigation and actually found what the problem was. In this video, I'm gonna give you a complete overview of what that issue was, show you what I was having happen, and then at the end, just explain a little bit of what I think that effect of that problem would have been on my review, if at all. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what the problem was that I was actually facing. So to explain the issue I was actually having. Now, if you don't know how these goggles work, they have two built-in patch antennas, which are located behind the front here, which are on PCBs. And then there are two external antenna options as well. On the display of these goggles, you can actually see the antenna readout in the top via little bars. And there's a diagnostic section to actually see how the antenna inputs are actually working. The day I got them, I got them home and I tested them on the bench and I did notice very quickly that something didn't seem right with one of the antennas. It just wasn't behaving the same on the bench as the other one. And when I took it out and about, it was behaving completely different to the other three in the sense the signal bars were not moving up and down as I would expect when I'm looking at the aircraft or when I'm looking away. It was more like there was just noise on that antenna input and it was just not moving in the way I would have expected. Before I actually made my review, as I said, I did actually reach out to the guys at HD Zero, but I didn't really get any answers to the problem I was facing. I was trying to understand if it was a software issue or a hardware issue. Because these goggles were brand new and PVTs, it was very possible it was software. And at the point of making my review, I didn't really want to mention it until I understood more. Anyway, some time passed and I didn't really get anywhere. So in the end, I tore them back down again and did a bit more investigation. Got both the connector under my new microscope as well as the UFL connector. And I found that the UFL was actually damaged. Looking at the footage that I'm going to put on screen now, you can see that the UFL connector actually has its center pin bent and the plastic around it is all mauled and it wasn't going on to the UFL port correctly. This means the center connector on the antenna was actually shorting to the outside shield and this explains why I was not getting the signal from that input than I would expect. Now, that was specifically this patch antenna on this side here, and it's on that same side that I mentioned in my review that is quite tight on the cable. Whilst I had torn these goggles apart once before finding the issue, I know that this problem was there from day one because I was having it before I ever took them apart, and my initial teardown made no impact on that, unfortunately. I was hoping originally after putting that all back tidily it would, but it didn't. So the situation really was that the UFL connector on that side was damaged and that antenna was not working. My belief is this was damaged in assembly and I think it's a result of that cable being extremely tight on that side and when they were trying to put the UFL on it just got mauled and it meant that it wasn't working correctly. What I can say is after doing a repair on the connector which is bending the pin straight again and then reconnecting it properly it is now working correctly. The antenna inputs are showing 100% correctly and the goggles appear to be working as I would expect.
I also, as part of the reassembly on these, added a little bit of hot glue onto those connectors on either side because those UFLs are very easy to come loose. And I am concerned that over time on these goggles, if they are thrown around a bit, you could find your own connector come loose. So it is worth keeping an eye on that diagnostic screen inside to check that your antennas are behaving as you would expect. With regards to the antennas, you wanna make sure that the front two are behaving the same and the external two are behaving the same. This issue really would only ever affect the internal patches because they're the ones on the UFLs, but it is worth making sure that you are getting the expected behavior. So did this issue affect my review of these goggles originally? Well, the reality of that is yes, there is no question that that behavior of only being on one patch antenna would have affected my original thoughts on these goggles. One comment I made about these is that I did find the internal patch antennas extremely directive. The reality was in that review, that patch antenna was working fine, that one wasn't working at all. So I would have only have been running on a single patch. Would have it also affected the signal behavior of the goggles? The chances are yes, but I didn't really see too many problems in my testing other than them being very directional. Now I have flown these quite a bit since actually doing the repair. And I will say that they have widened a bit on their directivity. I can't say it's a dramatic difference, but I do feel it is better than it is before. Has it had an effect on how well the penetration of the HD0 system works compared to my original tests? Personally, I don't think it is. This has more than anything improved the directional performance of the goggles than the out and out range and signal performance because overall, I was still getting good range and performance on these goggles. It was really just the fact that you had to stay directly on target with them. Now, I am going to be doing a lot more tests on this as the weather improves because it is winter here now, but I did just want to share with you my findings. If you do own a set of Scout HDs, I would be keeping an eye on those antenna inputs and just make sure that the behavior is as you would expect. If you go into that diagnostics, you can see what the performance is on the internal antennas compared to the externals. And really more than anything, what you're looking for is is that the patches on either side are behaving the same. And if you've got identical antennas on the Omnis, they're the same as well. Now, that is pretty much it for this update on this. I will be making more content on this system in the next weeks and months. I am waiting on the new HD0 camera to arrive, the retail version. I do actually have the pre-release version in this quad here. However, for my review, I want to make sure I'm reviewing the one you guys can buy and not the pre-release one that I had because there is some differences in the way they work in the sense of this one doesn't have the camera menu options. So I can't really comment on that. I'm hopefully gonna get the other one in due course and then talk about that one properly when it arrives. That's really it from me on this one. If you'd like, to support the channel and if you'd like to see more content like this in the future please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well if you'd like to support us further there is a link to my patreon account in the description as well and also you can come and join my discord server and say hi and see a bit more of my nonsense over there as well if you'd like to do so that's it from me please stay safe and i will speak to you guys soon